Hello and welcome. I'm Raghav and today we are going to learn how do we use authorizations in Postman. This is going to be very easy and very interesting. We will see some examples for different types of authorizations. Uh, we will see how do we add a bearer token. We will also see what are the different locations where we can add the authorizations and we'll see some examples and demo. So let's get started. Authorization in very very simple words is verifying the identity and it is to make sure that the user who is trying to access the resource is actually allowed and authorized to do so and to do that we have different types of authorizations like we use username and password or we use our API key or we use some tokens so let us see some examples uh, if I go to my postman now I have opened my postman on the browser if you want you can also use the postman that you have on your desktop or you can continue with the browser and here i'm going to create a new api request so i will click on this plus button here you can also just say new api request from the new menu and here uh, this is step number one we are going to create a new api request and here you will see all these tabs in any api request we have params, authorizations, headers, body, etc. And here we have the authorization tab. So if I go here, there are different types of authorization. So you can see here, if I go to this drop down, we have inherit from parent. In case the API does not require any authorization, we have no auth. Then we have API key. Here we give the key value pairs and we also have option to add this to header or to the query parameters then we have bearer token so here we can add the bearer token uh, let me remove this so you can add your bearer token here then we have options for basic auth this is this will use the username and password so you can add your username and password here then we have digest oauth hawk authentication and so many other types of authorizations and we can add the authorizations as required and as available for that particular API. To give you an example, uh, I will go to, I will take some GitHub REST APIs. I will say GitHub REST API. You can use any API. If you have any API that uh, needs authorizations, you can use that. And here I will go to, so you can see the, there are a lot of REST APIs for GitHub. I will go to here and I will go to repositories so we will see the apis available for repositories and here we have so many apis and here we have a api to list all the repositories for an authenticated user so for a particular user it will list all the github repositories i will go here and use this api and for this i will need the url so this is the endpoint and to get the url i'll just copy this this is the complete url of the api and i will say this is a get request and now if i try to run this without adding any authorization let me see the output i will click on send and here in the response you can see i am getting the response code 401 that is unauthorized because this user is not authorized therefore I'm getting 401 not authorized and it also says this requires authentication so I will have to add the authentication here and for this API I can use the bearer token for github so I will log into my github account if you do not have an account you can first create an account and here I will go to the settings let me go here i'll go to the settings and here developer settings and here we have personal access tokens i will go here and i will generate a new token and i will say this is for demo you can give any name here i'll just 
expire it after seven days and I'm giving it access to the all the repositories so it can check the repository status or full control on private repositories and I don't need any other access I will click on generate token and the token is uh, generated I will copy this token from here and go to my authorizations tab here and I can go to bearer token and here I can just give the value or paste the token value so this is done let me try to run this again I will now click on send and now you can see we have got the result so it is showing me the status code 200 ok and in the response I am getting all the repositories that I have created on my github account so you can see all these repositories that I have are created here and if I like I can also put this authorization uh, in OAuth so let me see if I say type is OAuth 2.0 and here I will give the access token and I will click on send and you can see again I am getting the response status code 200 ok and I am getting all the list of the repositories from my account so this is how we can use this uh, authorization and we have done step number one we have done step number two and we have added the authorization and you can add the authorization as needed by your API and uh, you can check your API documentation if it requires any authorization and if yes what is the type of authorization it requires or you can talk to either the product team or the developer team they will tell you what are the authorizations required and the values and then there are different locations so one location is here within the request you can go to the authorization tab and add these requests add these authorizations or if you like you can also go to the collection and at the collection level as well we can add the authorization so if I go to collection and say edit here you can see there is a auth tab here and we can add the authorization here so this will be added this will work for all the requests under that collection so sometimes if you have a lot of API requests and all need same authorization you can put them in a collection and you can give the authorization at a collection level or inside a collection you can create a folder so you can see if you go to a collection we have an option to add folder and like this new folder is already created and here as well at a folder level also we have the authorization so we can add the authorization at a folder level here and all the APIs under this folder will use this authorization and apart from this uh, you can also see here uh, let me go back to bearer token and here you can see there is a warning or a message the parameters hold sensitive data to keep this data secure while working in a collaborative environment we recommend using variables so if you do not want to expose this value this token you can use this or uh, you can take this from a variable and you can create a variable at any location like at a request level collection level or you can create a variable at global or environment level so if I go here uh, let us say we have these global variables here you can create a variable here or you can create an environment let me just add an environment and create a variable here I'll call it as QA and I will say variable is token and I will give the token value in the current value section and in the initial value section I will say add your token this is because when you share your workspace or your collection with your team whatever you see here will be shown to them and this will not be exposed so if you want to keep it private to yourself you just use the value here in the current value column and not in the initial value column and when you click on persist all it will also copy this same value here and it will get exposed so that's why I am keeping it here and then I'll just save this and now I'll go back to my API request now make sure you select the environment first so uh, I think we have got two queue environments let me check 
here we have uh, let me just select the environment for now this is the environment I need and here in the authorization I will say it should get the token let me see from where it will get the token yeah it is the token coming from this environment and now this is not exposed I can now click on send and check and yes I am getting the response here and if I like I can also save this API request I'll click on save and I will say this is authorization demo and I can save it to any of these collections and I will click on save and the API is saved here okay so this is how we can do authorizations or add authorizations in Postman. I hope this session was very useful for you. In the coming sessions, we will learn more about Postman. I will see you in the next session. Thank you for watching and never stop learning.